Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of An Ecologist Plays Grounded, the game where we are the size of ants and have to somehow survive in this crazy, crazy world. Uh, speaking of crazy, crazy world, just a massive thanks again from my side. You guys are just, again, being amazing by subscribing and watching the videos, and I love it. And you guys are really helping this channel grow. So thank you very much for that. And now, let us jump right into the episode and do some stuff. Now, as you will see, I have actually built a little bit on this uh, house of mine. <laughs> and that's because at the start of Tuesday's episode, the wolf spider came wandering around here. And I just wanted a, an environment that is a little bit safer for me as I start out my little adventure here. And so we now have a bit of a bigger house that is built here and this will keep us a little safer which is good now uh, there is one thing i do want and that is more storage that is going to be a bit of a priority for me now and then when i have got that we'll go on with today's main adventure and i'll tell you about that in a moment Okay, now all the storage crates over here have been made, the storage chests, and they're labeled and icons displaying what's in it, so that it's easy for us to actually sort. And now that uh, Obsidian has actually brought out a, a sort button, it really is just amazing. You just click the sort button and boom, everything is sorted according to what it is. Really, really amazing. These quality of life updates that they are bringing out, I am really loving it. And now, for our first objective today, I was feeling bad about what I have to do now. And now I'm feeling less bad about what I have to do. I've got my hammer equipped. We are going hunting for a sp particular prey item. I want to have better armor, first of all. And secondly, I want to make a better hammer. And to do that, we have to go hunt some ladybugs. Now, the ladybugs in this game, I initially thought would be the Cochinella septum punctata, the seven-spotted ladybug or seven-spotted ladybird beetle. But it seems that the species that is actually in here is another exotic species known as the harlequin ladybug, Harmonia axirides. Uh, now, both of those species are actually exotic in the USA where this game is set. So we are doing a little bit of control over here. Unfortunately, it seems I can't find a ladybug now, and I'll be back with you in a moment when I actually do spot one. Well, it hasn't taken long. I have not found a ladybug. I have found the orb weavers over there, but I have also found something else, and not the ants that old Pete is referring to. Instead, I have found this plank over here. Now, underneath this plank, it is not that safe. There is a wolf spider living in this area, so we shouldn't be here after dark. However, there is something I need to do here. And that is to actually set up a beacon at the top of this plank. Because so I have the quest, the Explorer Plank Cliff quest, which basically means that we've got to put one up here. And we've got a spiderling over here. Which is a new thing for us. Oh, hello, two of them. Hopefully now the big old wolf spider won't pop up. Oh dear, I hear something. It is definitely the wolf spider. I'm not sure where he is or where she is, because that'll be... Mama Wolf Spider. I can't see her. But I know she is... Probably in this area now. Oh, lots and lots and lots of spider mites as well. Okay, I am just going to run up Plank Cliff over here. Now, wolf spiders are actually very good parents in that they will actually, the female will carry, or the mother, will carry her babies on her back. After they have hatched, actually, I think that she will carry the eggs as well, and then she will carry the babies on her back. Now, I have had many encounters with, with these wolf spiders in my garden, carrying the babies on her back. 
Not sure where she is now, but these babies will remain on the mother's back for an extended period of time, up until they are basically large enough to disperse and carry on as wayward sons. Now, spiderlings like these ones would also be able to, they're small enough, so they would be able to disperse very long distances by using that ballooning that I mentioned in a previous episode, where they basically stand with their abdomens raised and then release a massive, well, I must say massive, but for them it is massive, a cloud of silk that then forms a triangular parachute and that allows them to actually get caught by air currents and allows them to disperse quite long distances. And they're able to disperse quite a few kilometers up into the atmosphere. But it is believed that there is a record of them traveling up to 1,600 kilometers using this method, which is just ridiculous if you think about it. I mean, I can't even travel 10 kilometers by foot. I definitely can't jump 10 kilometers. And here these guys are just making little balloons with their butts and traveling a hundred, few hundred kilometers or a few thousand kilometers in with it. Which is, you know, that's just amazing. So unfortunately, I was unable to find a ladybug, but I hope that I will have better luck in the morning. So I'm just going to sit around, and then when morning comes, I will go ladybird hunting. So I will see you when the sun rises. Okay, I said I was going to just relax, uh, but instead I have started building the second uh, layer of our house. But I also <laughs> am hearing the our prey down below and then our ladybug prey over here is taking a nap now this is the harlequin beetle notice the white spots and the black head makes a w it either makes a w or an m if it does that it is most likely the harlequin beetle the other species that could have been was the seven spotted or seven spot ladybug which is the Cochinella uh, septum punctata, which means the Cochinella refers to scarlet, and that's a lot of the ladybugs are in the Cochinella genus because it's got the scarlet color. Oh, shut up, you stupid little aphid. There. Being annoying. Trying to talk to people about ladybugs, and you are being annoying. Okay. So the Cochinella refers to the scarlet color. And then septum is seven, and punctata refers to spots, um, like puncture, like you've got a puncture spot. But in this case, punctata would refer to spots, but this one only has five spots. It would normally have three spots on the back, like here, and then this spot would be closer to the front if it were a seven-spot ladybird. And then it also wouldn't have this clear W shape that is present here. Now, normally it would have a little white spot over there and another one over there, and that would really make it a clear W. Both of them, however, are exotic in the USA. Both of them were brought into control aphids, and the seven-spot ladybug at least does a good job at that. But the harlequin ladybug, like this one here, in some cases may actually be a bit more of a pest in that they are eating aphids, yes, but they're also eating other ladybugs, including members of their own species. They can be cannibalistic as well. And in some cases, they are also eating the plants that you want them to protect, which is not a very good thing to do. So we are going to do some biological control here. And how we are going to do this is with a hammer because a normal old sword or spear doesn't do that much damage. If we look here at data and we look at ladybirds, ladybirds or ladybugs here, they are resistant to stabbing. No real problem with uh, slashing, but busting, which is hammers and maces, they are weak too. So they have a bit of a weakness to the hammer. Now, however, this little pebblet hammer is really not the best to go and use, but we have no choice. So we are going to try and take down a ladybug. So wish me luck, guys. Here we go. Hello there, ladybug. Blocking is essential. You can basically get three hits in and then you've got to get ready to block because they are going to try and nail you with very strong attacks. And since we don't have ladybug armor on yet... Oh, you see, that happened. I was a little bit out with the block. And again, out with the block. Which means we are just going to take a little of a meal there. Here he comes. Perfect block. Remember that... Oh yes, perfect. This is also what hammers will do. It will stun your prey, allowing you to get a free, few free hits in. 
But you have to be careful that you don't... And here comes a big one. Oh, damn, I was, I was just a little bit too late. But here we go. Remember that the second attack of yours and the third attack will do more damage. So it is good to be able to at least get the second and third attack in. Okay, we've got some ladybug parts from that. However, no ladybug heads, which is weird because I'm pretty sure that one did have a head. So that means I'm going hunting some more. So let's have a look and see if we can find another one. Okay, I have finally found one again. So here's another one of the Harlequin ladybirds. Now, the ladybird part of their name comes from the Virgin Mary, apparently, which uh, there are two stories about why it's called the ladybird, uh, or it used to be called Our Lady's Bird, and then it got shortened to ladybird or ladybug, even though it isn't a bug, it is a type of beetle. Now, the first one, which is most likely not true, is that they used to uh, they say that the farmers used to pray to the Virgin Mary to protect their crops, and then this, these guys were sent. Uh, the second reason, which is most likely the truth, is that it also refers to this scarlet coloration on the shell of the ladybird, where in many of the first paintings of the Virgin Mary, it, she's depicted with a scarlet cloak, and hence the association with the Virgin Mary, with the a ladybird over here. In either case, um, whichever the reason is, we are going to smash this one in a moment. So, here we go. Oh, doesn't start very well. Ah, that one went better. Perfect block there. And it is a stunned one. This is quite stunning. Haha. <laughs> ah, always take off my block just as it attacks. But there we go. Another ladybug down. Again, only some ladybug parts, no head on that one either. Let me go hunt another one. Took me a long time to get this one, so let's see whether I'm lucky in getting the third one. Now, they are diurnal, so they are active during the daytime, and they are also poisonous as a species or as a group. Most of them are poisonous, hence the bright coloration that they are showing, the bright red and black color known as aposomatic coloration. So they contain a quite a lot of irritating chemicals in their hemolymph, which is basically like their blood. And they are also able to actually um, excrete that, usually at their leg joints. And then, of course, if you try to eat that, firstly, it stinks. And secondly, then, it uh, is not edible. So it does make it inedible. Now, I did just hear one. Just trying to see where. There it is. Hello, ladybird. Now, there are also most likely some orb weaver spiders in that area. So we are going to just get the attention of this ladybug. Now, we could try just shooting it from up here. But notice how very little damage the arrow does. Plus... We are also now under attack by an orb weaver spider, which is not ideal. You see, that's why I wanted to get away from that. We are now under attack by orb weaver spider and ladybug. Okay, the orb weaver is leaving us alone. Which means we can probably draw the ladybug's attention again. Yes, there we go. Now, the thing is, they can now jump onto these things, so you can no longer cheese them. And get them to die without them at ever attacking you. There we go. Finally managed to att block at the right time there. Also did get a critical hit there with the little sparks that we saw. Okay, here we go. And another one down. Okay, so normally this ladybug would have secreted hemolymph from these little joints along its legs. So the hemolymph being like the blood, they don't have a closed circulatory system like we as humans do. Oh, we found the ladybug head. Nice. We finally found one that hasn't lost its head yet. It has now, but it hadn't previously. Now, we still need another head. Oh, so we need to kill some more. Right, so we need one ladybug head for the hammer, and we need one for the ladybug headpiece. Um, so, the armor. So, I'll be back in a moment. Now, this area we have been previous last time, I think it was, actually. We were in here and we attacked the bombardier beetle. And we're attacked by the bombardier beetle. And 
the bombardier beetle is back, which means we're going to kill another one. So the bombardier beetle, last time I didn't really properly explain how on earth they work, but in the abdomen, so in the backsides there, they actually have two tubes. Each tube and uh, glands, that's part of those tubes there, contain a compound. One is a type of peroxide, and the other is a different compound that I'll have down below. And what they do is they stay in these separate chambers because that the peroxide will act as a catalyst to allow a chemical reaction to go to happen faster and that chemical reaction is to heat up the other compound oof, that they have stored and when they are doing basically that squirting some kind of hot juice at you <laughs> uh, okay let me rephrase that when they are doing that attacking you defending themselves they're actually contracting these two tubes and the glands forcing the two compounds to get together and as it does so the one chemical gets heated up to boiling point basically very close to a hundred degrees celsius and that is very very hot obviously and in the process of doing so some of it gets vaporized it gets turned into a gas and it expands and through this expansion obviously the volume then increases and that then results in it basically squirting out this hot boiling liquid out of its backside which it wouldn't be able to contain normally in its in its body I mean, it's boiling point it is too hot to contain you can't contain a li hot liquid like that in your body so what it does is just before it squirts it out it mixes the two results in that reaction that chemical reaction happening and then it basically releases this boiling hot liquid on whatever is trying to attack it and obviously then it's a bad idea to attack it. It's an amazing adaptation, an amazing defense mechanism. And the bombardier beetles are able to contract very, very quickly. I think able to do 20 of these squirts per second, which is basically rapid fire. This is like firing boiling hot liquid in a, as a, with a semi-automatic rifle. But this should be it. Oh, almost. There we go. Let's hope for a head. Yes, we did get a head. We got a head in life. These are mites are annoying. They're, they're mighty annoying. Okay, now we should have enough of everything to actually make the ladybug armor. Which is my favorite armor, at least for this stage in the game, which is definitely my favorite armor. Unfortunately, there is something that I realize that we do need. And that is berry leather. Oh dear. Okay, so. I'm going to drop off a few things. And then I'm going to head to the hedge. And the hedge on the map would be in this area, this rect the weird elbow at the corner in the corner here but where we are heading is in that section there now there is a wolf spider in this general area it does wander along to this side so i'm going to do this in the morning when the wolf spider will most likely be sleeping and there are quite a few orb weaver spiders and some bombardier beetles in this area as well so not the safest of areas to head but lots of berries hanging from the trees or from the shrubs there so I'll do that in the morning. Alrighty then, it is the next day and we are at the hedge. And if we look at where we are on the map, pretty much here. And this is the spot you want to be. To the right hand side on that hill over there, there may be some bombardier beetles, so we may go pay them a visit as well. But for now, our main prey or our main quarry would be berries. And there are lots and lots of berries hanging around all over the place. If we can just have a look up there. Right up there, there are some berries. And if we use a bow and arrow, we can shoot them down and they go... Splat. Now, I have tested to see what happens if this drops on you. Nothing happens. So, for science, we can do that again. If we can get hit by a falling berry.
and nothing happens. <laughs> okay, so thankfully they haven't changed that. Imagine they actually had, and I died because I was being stupid or testing stuff for science, let's call it that. It's a very fine line sometimes between being stupid and testing things for science. And then in here, there are loads. There are also loads of spiders and larvae and bombardier beetles just outside. So there are loads of other things as well, which you may or may not want, depending on whether you like them or not. But we are going to quickly gather a whole bunch of these berries. And then there is also a science machine up there. Okay, it is now early morning again, and I have finished construction on a little bit of a project here. Three spinning wheels. The spinning wheels, quite easy to make. You just need some acorn tops, clay, red ant parts, sap, and crude rope, and then you can make one of these. And these are amazing because they will convert one web fiber into one silk rope, or one uh, plant fiber into one crude rope. So no longer ha do you have to take three plant fibers to make one rope. Now you can have a one-to-one -one ratio, which just saves a lot of resources. I have also built two of these jerky racks on which you can dry things like plant fibers or insect meat, but we are going to be using it to dry our berry chunks. And we've got two of these, so we can dry six at a time. And this is just going to take a while in order to actually make. We also have these things now, the armor dummies, on which we can store some pieces, like for example, grub goggles, okay, this guy needs to be rotated, he was just staring blankly at the wall, I suspect this one also, and look at that, I love these armor dummies, and one of the things that's amazing, if you hold E, you can swap between your equipped armor and whatever armor set is up on here. So this is, yeah, amazing little quality of life thing to have. But now we are in the flower garden and we can climb these hosta plants over here to easily get a whole bunch of flower petals. All we need to do is get up right up into their business by jumping from leaf to leaf. It reminds me of Mario. And then attacking the flowers three times to get three petals. And there are also some petals lying around. Doesn't matter which color they are. Yellow, blue, red, all just becomes normal old flower petals when in your inventory. You can also just shoot them with a bow. Each shot gives you one and then after three the flower is gone. And you can shoot every one of these flowers to actually give you the petals. So you can get quite a few petals in this way. Now the hosta plant, last time we encountered it, was actually in green hell, where it's called a plantain lily, and you can use it to craft some bandages. Uh, certain, the lily bandage, for example, was crafted using this plant. Very popular in the gardening community, and it was obviously planted by Professor uh, Dr. Wendell Tully in his garden as well. Now, one thing that we can make is now the insect axe, because we have got enough bombardier parts, we've got silk rope, we've got ladybug heads, so we are going to make an insect axe. And now this insect axe will take fewer swings to actually chop down grasses and normal old dandelion stems, but it's also able to chop down larger things like this husky weed over here. So let's give it a chop and use it to actually easily, with eight hits, it uh, chopped down this big one, giving us quite a few of these weed stems. Now, some of these husky weeds will give you more weed stems than others, but here we go. We now are able to, I think we got 10 from that weed stem over there, and we can use it in further constructions on our, in our base. All right, it is a new day full of opportunity, and the opportunity that we have today is to craft the armor piece, the ladybug armor piece. So we've got the headpiece, we've got the thorax, or the, the we've got the main body armor there, and we've got the shin guards. And so now, the ladybug armor. Oh, wonderful. And now, we can just hold E to swap so that we now have the ladybug armor on us, which really looks formidable. And then the ant armor is now safely stored there, and we can very quickly swap it around. 
Man, oh man, this is going to be awesome. But here we are going to call it a day for now. So thank you once again for joining me on this little adventure of ours. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something as well, especially about those little ladybugs right down there, the Harlequin ladybug. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, leave a comment, tell me what you enjoyed, uh, what you want me to do next. And then also remember to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. For those of you that have subscribed, you guys are legends and I love it. So until next time then, stay safe and I will see you all soon.